You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a new show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired. For this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Clark. It is a gloomy day here in New York City, but I love this weather and it's Memorial Weekend. So I have a wonderful show for you guys today. Um, I have, uh, I want to introduce uh, Mr. Ben Pappas. He is a uh, retired a uh, lieutenant colonel from the Marine Corps, and now he is actually a life coach. So we're so excited to have him today. Ben, hi. <laughs> hi, Melissa. So great to be here. Hey. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Ben. You know, you and I are friends on Instagram, and I love your videos that you make. They're so, uh, I, I can't really describe, like, I can't believe that you do this on your own. They have the subtitles <laughs> and everything. I love Thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. When did yeah. you start doing those uh, videos? Oh, it's probably been about a year now uh, mm -hmm. that I've been doing them. And mm -hmm. I just started experimenting a little bit here and there, and then slowly layering, building them up more and more, and just trying to get my own message out there and trying to you know, increase the quality with each video that I put out as well. So uh, I still have a long way to go, but it's a lot of fun doing it too. Yeah, they're, they're really great. Now, you were in the Marines for 24 years, correct? Right, correct. Mm. That's right, that's right. So now you're retired, and uh, I guess you learned a lot um, from being a lieutenant colonel. So yes, tell, us, yes. tell us about your time in the Marines, and happy Memorial Day to you. Oh, thank <laughs> you so we much. Did. Yeah, and, and thanks for reminding me, too. I just want to take a moment to say, uh, to pay my respects to all the Gold Star families out there that have lost someone in the service to our country and also all of those who've uh, paid the ultimate price in the service to our country as well too. So happy Memorial, Memorial Day to everybody. Just please remember what it's about as well. Um, so yeah, those, one of the things I learned in the Marine Corps definitely was about uh, selfless leadership. And that is a constant ongoing process. But I had a, quite an adventure. I met some amazing people in the Marine Corps, some of the, uh, some really no kidding heroes, some mm -hmm. very selfless leaders. I was an infantry officer for a good amount of time. I served in Force Recon, that's the, uh, the reconnaissance element in the Marine Corps. I served in Marine Corps Special Operations and also was a diplomat overseas as well as a Marine attache to Rome, Italy. So wow. I speak a little bit, uh, parlo italiano <laughs> a little bit as well. <laughs> I'm, a little rusty, but don't test I'm, me too much. <laughs> I'm lucky if I can speak English, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little rusty right now, but yeah, so fantastic adventure. And honestly, I think one of the biggest things that the Marine Corps teaches you is really you know, we're dealing with making breakthroughs for people, helping people make breakthroughs, mm -hmm. whether it's overcoming fear of, you know, something like jumping out of airplanes. That's a big one, right? Uh, overcoming, you know, physical fitness goals, things like that. But that's something that's an everyday leadership action in the Marine Corps. So really, we were doing this all the time. I was doing this all the time. I had fantastic mentors and leaders around me. And yeah. it really kind of rolled itself into what I'm doing now as a life coach as well. So, you know, uh, do you teach people about claustrophobia in, in that field as well? Oh, boy. I think um, not specifically dealing with that. I do know mm. I've been put in some um, situations that have triggered some of that. And so I think one of the biggest things that we would teach for something like that and some of my own experience with it is really practicing something we call combat breathing, where yeah. it's a form of meditation. Really, it's a, it's a cool way to say start meditating and really just focusing on your breath because breath is life. It stays, keeps you grounded, keeps you mindful, and it helps you to deal with a situation like that. I'm also a combat diver, so people can get claustrophobic at night underwater sometimes. It's strange, you get vertigo as well, but wow. that act of just focusing on your breath can calm you in many situations, so. What's a combat diver? Oh gosh, okay, so you use a, a Mark 25, hope my dive instructors aren't listening right now, 
uh, a Mark 25 rebreather device. It's a Dreger diver, uh, Dreger um, diving rig that has mm -hmm. dual hoses that come out into this rebreather that's in front of you. Yeah. And it allows you to be underwater for up to four hours in very shallow areas and it allows you to sneak into places. And the big thing is it has no bubbles. So it has no bubbles. Wow. So you can sneak in, sneak back out. Yeah. Some cool stuff. Dangerous. Definitely very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So I'll say I have a I have a hard time wearing this mask. <laughs> I don't think I'll be good at uh, being a diver. <laughs> yeah, it's it's I think it acquired taste a little bit. But again, that was that was one of the, the things as well that I learned how to overcome my own fears in that as well, yeah. too, and really learn how to dig down deep. And sometimes it's interesting, but in situations like that, you know, overcoming fear doesn't mean getting like tough and mean. It means really having to go to a different place, like cross claustrophobia or this fear of being underwater. You have to go to a place that's really calming for you. And um, so, yeah, so I think that would be probably where the breathing would come in and just remain calm. That's, that's good advice. That's, that's very good advice to give to somebody. But do you, th yeah, I'm, I see that doesn't do anything for me, like overcoming fears. Like I'm afraid of roller coasters. So I wouldn't go on one because it doesn't, it doesn't thrill me. You know, I don't want to feel that you know, scared. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, if you would want to do it too, that's the thing. Now, if you have to do it, it's another thing, right? Correct. Then, then we can, then you and I that's, get together and we'll work through that. <laughs> that's us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Um, did you have a hard time with discipline prior to joining the Marines? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. I mean, I would say probably when I was a kid, yeah. um, if my mom's listening out there, she'll probably call in and say, <laughs> tell you all kinds of stories. But probably when I was a kid, I was, you know, pretty wild, I would say, but what really gave me a lot of focus was uh, playing football in high school. I really mm -hmm. latched onto that. I was so focused on it. I loved it. I just kind of found my thing. Um, and I did really well in it. Ended up uh, getting an appointment to the United States Naval Academy wow. and graduated from there and uh, played football there as well, too. Then I served a selected Marine Corps. So that's kind of my journey in the Marine Corps to become a Marine officer. And yeah, learning about discipline, football was one thing. Then I went to the, the Naval Academy we're in a whole other ball game, you know, then the Marine Corps is another level up from all of that as well, too. And the first day you're in the Marine Corps as an officer, if you make it as an officer, you get selected and um, you become a commissioned officer. It's all about leadership, servant leadership, disciplined leadership. So that is pounded into you from day one. So there's really, and discipline really is just, that's the baseline, you know, and then from, from there, um, you have to do a lot of other things becoming a leader your journey of becoming a leader because no one i'm just a believer as well too i don't think there are really born leaders out there i, th I think some people can tend towards it pretty quickly you know yeah. but i think leaders can be created can be made can be trained you can learn how to be a good leader for everybody out there who's listening as well too so um that's that's the good news with that now you're a father for two teenage boys correct yes i am Yes. And it, do, you teach, of, <laughs> do you teach? Do you teach them all this? Do you teach them I'm everything? Not, that I do. I do. I try to. I try to, but try to not be uh, so on the nose with it, you know? Because yeah. I think they'd be like, "Oh gosh, your dad goes again." Come here, son. Let me tell you <laughs> why you need to follow the Marine Corps leadership traits or something like that. So, um, you know, I try to be um, gentle. I try to be as kind as I can you know, have a firm hand when I, when I need to. But I think the biggest things I teach them is to be a leader and that being a leader means, first of all, setting the example, trying to do the right things. No one is perfect. You know, yeah. everyone has, has things they have to overcome. As you know, I'm lucky I have a fantastic uh, wife. Their, their mom is, is amazing. So a yeah. lot of, most of the credit goes to her. But yes, and I, I tell them that. I tell them, you know, first of all, about leadership, setting the example, trying to do the right thing. Remember, it's not just, being a leader when people are watching, but it's when you think no one else is watching as well too, when it, when it counts, when it really counts. So yeah, that, those are some of the big things, yeah. Do they have any interest to getting into the Marines? You know, they've had some conversations with me, but I try not to influence them on it. I, I, don't, um, I don't see it right now, but you never know, you never know. So, but I don't, uh, I don't try to make it too glamorous or glorify it just because I've seen, you know, the really fun side, but I've seen the really hard, um, bad side. I've lost a lot of friends, things like yeah. that. So, 
you know, which is, which is a reality in, in that business. So, um, yes, yeah, so I, I, I encourage them if they'd like to do that, but I don't try to push them in that direction. Right. You know, every now and then they'll ask me some questions that I get a little concerned. I'm like, Oh, what is, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a nice unit there because you're a life coach. Your wife is a realtor. She is. So, she is. so yeah. So you guys have Thank a nice you. family unit and, um, you Thank know, you. I, I really love your, uh, videos. I'm going to say that yet again, because I want people to go to your Instagram and watch your videos that you do. I'm sure it takes a long time to do that. I know when I do a video, it takes, you know, a good hour, but it you're does. putting, you're putting subtitles as well, which is very important for the hearing impaired. And I want to give you props for that. So thank you so much, you know, thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. yeah no. It's definitely, definitely a little bit of work to do it. Um, but again, I always keep that in mind that some people, they can't, um, they are hearing impaired. Yeah. And also I've had people from overseas as well too, telling me that I can't understand you. This was about a year ago. Can you put subtitles? And so I had to really figure that out um, because they would translate it. And right. so that was, that was interesting. That was another reason why I started doing that regularly. So you have people from overseas hearing you now. I do. I do. Right. Right. That's so really, it's, yeah. It is. It's interesting. It's really interesting. All right. Let's get into business here. <laughs> oh, that wasn't the business. Right. No, let's I'm, get into no, business scared. here. <laughs> I got to take advantage of this right now. Yeah, that's a okay. warm up. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, this is your job. You go, you go to businesses, you go to seminars, you do individual counseling for people. Right. Right. Uh, right. Let's talk about this pandemic and what advice would you give to us to slowly get back into our livelihoods? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. I mean, I think the biggest thing is there are really two elements to this. I would say vision and action. I think everyone out there, as we're dealing with this current situation, you really have to envision what is it that you truly want? What is it that you see your life unfolding like? Whatever the yeah. situation may be, because we don't know if the context is going to change. If things, if, you know, I know people are getting sick of this, but if this is the new normal, how things are going to occur, but get very clear about what it is you want and why it is you want it. Okay. And then take massive action, take huge action every day. And when I say huge action, let me just be, be clear on this. Baby steps are important, small steps. And I always say it's something called success momentum that if we take a little step each day, you know, little by little, the steps become bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you have this, what we would call in the Marine Corps, a bias for action. Okay. So any former Marines out there will know what I'm talking about, but you need to have a bias for action. So condition yourself. Now, any change you're going to make in your life, you need to visualize it. You need to have the right strategies for it. And then you need to really condition it. And that comes from visualization. Your mind doesn't know if you've actually done it or if you're just visualizing doing it. Okay. This That's is something right. in sports psychology they do as well too, but really, really important that you visualize what you want, rehearse it in your mind, and just like any, any, you know, prize fighter or anyone who's getting ready for a big sporting event, they visualize what they're going to do. They rehearse it. They practice. So visualize yourself really doing well in this new environment as we return to our work life. Think about how you want to be, how you want to perform, and then start making it that way. But I think, you know, little simple things. Okay, here's a simple step. Let's go ahead and start waking up at the time that you know you have to wake up, right, for... Yeah, your job if you're going back to it because unless you've been living that way, hats off. I know I've been off my game. Not gonna lie there, right? So sometimes sleeping in, sometimes not. But if we return to that, just getting back into those habits. How, can I just ask you really quick about real um, your wife with the real estate? How is sure. the business? How's the business? Is she uh, having yeah, a hard time right now? She's she's out today actually um, showing houses and. Oh, She's working right now. Yeah. So and I think there's been a little bit of a slowing, but as far as I understand it, and again, I hope I'm getting this all right for all the professionals out there, but as far as I understand it, you know, it's an essential service. So, you know, yeah. you need food, you need shelter, it's housing, whether you're renting a place or buying a place. So um, things have been rolling right along for her and been pretty yeah. busy. I think most of her friends that are real estate professionals, I think it's the same from what I've seen from my bird's eye view. Yeah. Well, I want to, I want uh, my audience to take advantage um, of this as well with you. So uh, if you guys want to call in, uh, the number is 888-627-6008. 
and uh, you can talk to um, Ben and ask him any questions that you have. Once again, 888-627-6008. Uh, so my next question to you, um, a lot of people lost their businesses. They're going through hardship. Uh, right, right. What would you give um, advice to somebody that wants to start something fresh? Maybe they perfected something at home and they believe that they can make money from it. So they want to do a career change. What advice would you right, give? Right. You know, I mean, I think in a nutshell, I think go for it. In a nutshell, I think, you know, go for it. Yep. Now, there's a smart way to do it, right? So like we talk about sometimes in, in business and in my um, leadership development courses that I teach, there's trust and there's smart trust, right? There's trust but verify. It's the same thing with this. There's going for it and there's smart going for it, right? Yeah. So if you believe you can do it or you don't believe you can do it, either one, you're right, okay? I think where your thoughts go, your energy is going to go as well. Uh, thoughts become things, all those ideas. Okay, this is, I'm kind of putting a framework around why I'm saying to go for it. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be easy to start that new endeavor, but there's a smart way to go for it. Okay. And that is yeah. if you have the resources, your financial interests taken care of, if you know, you can, you have some legs to last for a little while as you develop this business, then go. If you don't, then maybe you need to develop it when you have free time and get this yeah. built up on the side. I mean, here we are, the virtual economy is here, right? This is whether we wanted it or not, it, is, uh, it was here before, but it's really, really here now. So if you have a skill, if you have a business, if you plan on taking that online, I suggest that as well. Yeah, go for it. Take a shot at it, you know? And here's the question I ask clients all the time. And I'll ask everyone this out there. Yeah. What would your 85-year-old self say to you if, if this person were sitting right next to you? Would they say, no, 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 don't go for it? Would they say, go? Go, yeah. get after it, make it happen. And I think, I think that's the big thing, to really ask yourself, you know, what, what am I going to say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years from now, depending on how old you are out there listening. And, you know, we can all be so lucky to live to our 85. It would be fantastic. Yeah. But I think you really have to look at it that way and take a shot, take a shot at it. Because I've never heard anyone say, man, I'm so upset I took a shot at that. But I have heard people say, I wish I would have taken a shot. And so then, you know, we work on, hey, well, what can you do now? And let's, let's get after it and, and try to make it happen. Okay. So, and get really clear about what you want in life. If, if that is the most important thing or if it's one of the most important things, go for it. But if, if it's not and you really look at everything that's involved in starting that business, then, you know, just, just take yeah. the action that's appropriately, appropriate for that. Wonderful advice. Thank you. We, we okay. actually have a caller. Okay, Peter. Great. <laughs> Peter. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Hey. Hi, Ben. How are you? Hi, Peter. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to ask you a question, and thanks for uh, your military service to our country. Uh, thank you so much for saying that. Um, so it, you just you almost just answered my question uh, before I even asked it, but I'll, I'll run it by you anyway. So let's do it again. Uh, Bounce a softball. Old. I'll try to really hit it. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm, 50, I'm 50 years old. Uh, okay. I've been working on Wall Street for 25 plus years. Wow. Um, you know, with, you know, the pandemic, uh, you know, everybody's had a chance to evaluate their lives, et cetera. And yeah. I'd love to change my career at this point in my life and do something that makes more of a contribution to the world. Um, the reality I face is that I'm pretty comfortable with my current income as it allows me to both cover my obligations and adequately see for the future. Um, what, in your opinion, what, would, what approach would you recommend for someone like myself where starting over at maybe an entry level salary might not be a financially responsible move considering my age and then I'm much closer to my career sunset and eventual retirement? Right. right. Yeah, that's a great question. I love this as a great um, kind of caveat off of that. So I think, I think the biggest thing, like if you and I were working together, what I would want to do with you is really get very clear about what it is you want to do, be very specific. And then figure out and really understand why, why do you want to do this? Okay. Because there are, you know, based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, you know, based on, I also listen a lot to the work of Tony Robbins to his uh, six human needs, things like that. So a lot of us, we blended in there, but the need to contribute to something bigger than yourself. Okay. This is a driving spiritual need for everybody to eventually have fulfillment. So 
you want to really see why is it that you want to do this other change your career and you're talking about making a contribution and just really figure out what kind of contribution is it who am i affecting um you know and and see how that how that really impacts you in your life and as i was saying if if right now you don't think you can just drop it quit and stop okay um, your current job because of the financial security that you have, which is a real thing. That's hundred percent a real thing. The certainty, stability, financial security is very, very important. So um, if you don't think you can do that right now, you can allocate a few hours every week, every day, depending on what your situation is. You might be at such a place in your career that you might have, be able to put a little more time into this other uh, quote unquote side hustle or this, you know, new growing business interest. And, that way you really develop it, you test the market. I think it's so important to interact with the market, okay? Um, you've probably heard of the concept of a minimal viable product, right, an MVP. The, you don't wanna perfect what, it, what it, the thing is you have, your service or your product, but you wanna go ahead and let this interact with the marketplace, let the marketplace tell you, is this something that is getting attention? Are people actually going to um, be very interested in what you have? So I would definitely start there, but go for it, try it. Do it in a way that doesn't jeopardize your other interests though, okay? So I'm also um, a kind of a, a national security strategist as well too, okay? I've gone to school for that at the National War College in, in DC here. And one of the things we look at when we are looking at creating a, a national security strategy are what are the primary interests you have as a nation, you know, it could be as a company, break it down to the individual as well too, okay? So look at your primary interests you know, financial security, physical security, um, contribution, you, you said as well, that's one of your driving core needs and interests and see how you can meet those that won't jeopardize another, okay? That's how we, we form a successful strategy and for life strategy as well too. I, I hope that answers the question. Is there anything else follow up with that? No, I, I, that's, that's, um, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Unfortunately, okay. I'm a licensed broker, and um, my fiduciary responsibility per prohibits me from doing a side hustle, as you call it, uh, <laughs> unless, it's, okay. unless it's on a volunteer basis. Um, so it, it would have to be like a, a try before I buy kind of okay. endeavor. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know it's obviously something that's been at the front of my mind for for a while now. Um, and, yeah. You know, my my main concerns obviously is like you know, health insurance and, you know, uh, being able to pay the mortgage, of course. <laughs> so, and those are huge um, things. I mean, if you, if you have a family, yeah. obviously that's, that's contribution in and of itself, you know? So, um, and, but you said it, I think you, you hit it on the head and I'm sorry if I, if I cut you off, I'll be really brief with this. If I think that if you do try it on a voluntary basis, see if you can build up, you know, gain some momentum, build a following, get people interested in, in it and just see how much attention you can get for this and interest. And then you'll know, you know, if it's time, when it's time to leapfrog and step over. And I completely understand what you mean, licensed broker, that certain things you, you cannot do. Um, so and hats off to you for following that as well too. Thank you for your time. I, I really pre appreciate you taking my question. It was really a pleasure talking to you. A pleasure to talk to you too. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. He can't see me. <laughs> you can see me though. <laughs> I can see you. I'll <laughs> um, Who are your mentors, Ben? Thank you very much for that, by the way. Who are your mentors? Yeah. Um, gosh, I think probably since I was young, obviously, um, you know, in my family starting off and then I would go, I would have to mention my football coaches coming up. You know, I won't mention by name so I don't forget anybody. No one gets mad at me. Sure. Uh, and then I've had so many good leaders and mentors throughout my Marine Corps career that there are, you know, too many to name there as well too, but just these, these institutions in themselves, you know, of sports coaches, you play such a strong role in, in young people's lives and then in the Marine Corps as well too. Um, so many commanders, uh, senior enlisted that I had as well too, that would just had so much, this just simple wisdom to pass to you, you know, especially uh, if you're about to make a decision that, wasn't the best for everybody kind of get taken aside. Hey, uh, let me tell you, what about this? We consider this. And so that was huge. And then the life coaching side, um, probably some pretty well-known people, uh, Tony Robbins, I mentioned him earlier, yeah. definitely one of my teachers, um, Chloe Madonna's 
Wayne Dyer and I would say Deepak Chopra, some very influential people in my life that I've uh, read a lot of their stuff and just somehow, some way it's just infused into me. And um, if that's even a word, I think it's a word. But it's uh, a word. <laughs> so it'll, it'll be coming out. I'd be careful. I don't, you know, marine, marineize any words on you. The Marines out there will understand, but you know, maybe other people. <laughs> well, what is, what does Memorial Day mean to you? Oh gosh. Yeah. Just um, aside from the fun time with family and friends, this is a little interesting right now, our current situation, but yeah, I just really try to take a moment and remember all of my brothers and sisters out there that have paid uh, the ultimate price, um, you know, and the families, the gold star families as well, too, that I personally know, and that I know um, possibly probably the hardest thing you could ever do is uh, burying a child. And so, you know, I try to keep that in mind and, um, you know, everything that their sacrifices they've made for all of us to enjoy the freedoms that we have. And now me not being in the form, I try to keep that in mind. And, you know, I also had a, uh, a great uncle who was killed in Normandy on Omaha beach and mm. uh, try to remember family members that have uh, paid the ultimate price as well too. So. Do you miss your work? Do you miss being in the Marines? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that can never be replicated. It's, no. Honestly, and you can press record now, recruiting command if you want to, but it is uh, amazing the things you see, the things you do, the people you meet, the energy, the team. So yes, I miss all of that. There's certain things I don't miss. Um, yeah. You know, there's some, some pretty hard things that you do as well too. And it's not so much the hard things, but um, you can imagine there's some things that happen in combat that, that sure. uh, that are definitely not uh, not things you want to you want to remember. So, but overall, yes, I would say 100%. I, I miss all the Marines out there, fantastic friends. So I wish all my brothers and sisters in the armed forces well as well too. And uh, please don't hesitate to contact me if I, if, I, if I can ever do anything for you. You know, um, we've got to take care of each other. This veteran suicide rate we have right yeah. now is, is off the charts too much. So please, I'm here for you. Um, I'm just a DM away. What, uh, what advice would you give to somebody who has, I know that you have, and thank God have not had PTSD, but what would you give advice to somebody who has it? Um, it's very bad right now. If I can just share one thing, we were talking to an, an old friend of ours, a vet, and he has nowhere to go. He can't go to the VA because of the pandemic. And we're sitting there listening to him and he's like going back in time. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, like he, he has nobody to talk to. He's by himself. So he's sitting there and, and he's literally talking as if he was back in Vietnam. And I'm like, oh my God, like I, I feel so bad. So whoever's listening right now, can you give them any advice on you know, how to help them? There's, there's always, the advice I would have is that there's always a way out. There's always, you know, an answer. Um, I think you have to be very careful about um, doing impulsive behavior, like really, really overdoing alcohol. Be very careful, you know, drugs and alcohol, abusing, things like that. Because a lot of the times with, with the suicides, from what I know, again, I'm not a 100% expert, like a licensed mental health professional that studies this sure. all the time. But um, my understanding is that a lot of these, a lot of these cases are impulsive when they're under the influence, um, and then they've been, and then they are um, not sleeping as well too. So what what I would say is try your best to focus on your wellness. You know, baby steps, like I said, one step at a time. And to really take care of yourself, try to get back into exercise. Uh, these, these are simple tactics. And yeah. then what I will also say about PTSD is that the, the events that happen, the traumatic events become frozen in time. So I would also encourage you, and I know right now you can't get to the VA, but um, if you can seek the help of, they have volunteer, uh, volunteer um, phone in uh, yeah. counselors as well too that are doing this on a voluntary basis. So seek help from one of these, speak to a licensed mental health professional um, and take care of yourself. Remember, don't let your body degrade. Don't let your willpower go down. But you know, all these things combined with the trauma of the past, the lack of sleep, abusing alcohol, abusing drugs. And you know, um, like I said, sleep's really important too. 
all these things combined together can lead to something happening. So you have to get help and take care of yourself the best you can, but there's always a way out. There's always someone you have to remember this, that has been through something worse than you have been through yeah. and, has, and has made it out and has lifted their situation. Okay. And this goes for anybody, not just veterans with PTSD, um, you know, or, or someone, it could be someone who's lost their job. Remember that, that there's always yeah. someone out there who has been through something worse, not saying yours isn't bad, hundred percent yours is bad. I'm not in any way diminishing. I'm speaking directly to anybody who's listening out there, not any way diminishing what you've been through because it is bad. Yeah. But remember there's someone who has found a way to get out of the situation that you're in and they've done it well, you can do it too. It's, it's a hundred percent true. So and I think what we can do is, you know, just us being, you're just listening to somebody, you know, um, I felt, you know, he wanted somebody to listen to him. And if we just take 10 minutes out of our time and, uh, yes. you know, if we know somebody, we can reach out to them and see how they're doing uh, during this pandemic. So I think that's very important too. Um, so we'll go back to the physical because I know you do a lot of your workout yeah, videos as well. And uh, those are also very inspiring. So why, it's you. very important for, you know, to keep maintain your um, physical being during this time. Uh, what do those videos mean to you when you do those workout videos and you're teaching people yeah, how, you know, how to work out properly? I just kind of dawned on me one day. I thought this is a big part of my life and what I talk about. And I was just saying a minute ago to, to our, you know, our veteran friend out there to get your body in motion. I really believe when I've always felt at my best, and I think there are probably a lot of people out there that would agree with this, yeah. is when I'm in motion, when I'm outdoors, when I'm doing some type of physical activity. And so I have injuries. I have things that I can't do. I'm limited in, in some ways, you know, compared to what I could do 20 years ago, right? Well, then yeah. I'd be seven. I'm only 27. So what am I saying? <laughs> I'm 28. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Five years ago. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, but I mean, I, I have limitations. I have old injuries. So I'm trying to do things that shows people out there, hey, this is an option. You don't have to do it like me. Okay. Um, right. But this is a big part of my life. So as I'm telling you to get your body in motion and to do things to that will help you support a positive, healthy mental state and emotional state, I want to demonstrate it because here I am doing it and I wasn't filming it for the longest time. I just thought, you know what, put it out there. I mean, people, people want to see and if they, and if it helps, great. I think, I think I've had a pretty good reaction from a lot of people on that. Mm. Um, and, uh, and obviously there's some amazing personal trainers out there that put videos out there. And so you just have to find what works for you who has the message, who has uh, the system that will work for you. And, but I wanted to put that out there because I'm trying to do, if you're trying to make a comprehensive change in your life, I really believe that the physical wellness, physical fitness, all those things will just have a profound impact on you and let you perform at your best, especially the business people I deal with, the executives I deal with out there. When they are so dedicated to their jobs and, you know, how is your yeah. fitness program? Well, I don't really have time. You don't have time. This is all you got. If you, if you fail here, you're going to fail in other places. Right. And so, and even people that, you know, I know there are people with injuries, illnesses, chronic pain, things like that. Do what you can do the best you can just find a way to do something, whatever it is. And, and if that just means you're doing whatever your doctor prescribes and you're trying to reduce inflammation or whatever it may be, just try to focus on that and make it a little better out there. So like I said, calibrate to your own situation, but it's really important. I really do firmly believe that our physical fitness supports mental fitness, supports emotional fitness. And so that's, that's the major purpose with doing that. What do you do on your off time when you're not working? <laughs> um, there's not a lot of off time. Uh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> I think I try to just be with my family, spend time with my family yeah. and, you know, um, as much as I can enjoy my kids. And oddly enough, in this situation, you know, I get to have my oldest son home from college, my youngest son here all the time, yeah. um, and my wife as well, too. So really just try to be grateful for the times that I have right now. And I think just dovetailing off that, I think gratitude is so important. So if you're facing something hard right now and keeping your attitude up in this current situation, 
try to remember little things you're grateful for, you know, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Just the other day I was um, going down the street, beautiful day out. And I said, really, you know what, right now I'm grateful for my sight. I'm grateful yes. for it. Yes. 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 Really just, you know, a simple thing like that. It's like all these things I'm seeing, it's amazing. And my heart goes out to people that are impaired in that way. But I just, I really, I felt this deep gratitude and it, it in an instant changes my perspective on everything. So I think being very mindful of what good is in your life, because what you focus on in life, whether you, you think that the cup is half full, you know, or half empty, that's going to really determine the way your attitude is, your perspective is, and therefore you will start leaning towards these kind of this negative thoughts, negative behavior, and not and not not in a uh, you know horrible way, but it may it may be enough that it just influences the way your life is going and the way you're feeling from day to day, the meaning that you're creating day to day. Yeah, so, if that makes That's, sense. It's wonderful. Thank you. Wh yeah, where do you see yourself in five years? I hope this blows up for you. I hope you know you you'll be I'll the next that. Jay Shetty. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> thank you, thank you. This I would love to do more of what I'm doing. I love working with people. This. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really my passion, purpose, my mission in life. I want to be able to help people to make breakthroughs, to accomplish the things that they thought they couldn't accomplish before, to live out their best lives. And hopefully in this process, you know, my ultimate mission statement is, as I sign off at the end of most of my videos, to make yourself better, make the world better. And that overall, you know, just putting people first, that's, um, that's what I hope to be doing on a larger scale. So thank you. I want to, I just, I wanted to thank you very much for that. I want to just discuss your, your slogan, R2. Can, oh um, so yeah, RP2EL. Sure. I forgot that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want you to touch upon that. We have a, like Not two minutes, easy. please, if sure, you can sure. tell us. So RP2EL stands for the right people with the right mindset, the right process for planning and execution, ethical decisions under stress, and learning from mistakes. This is my team leadership, uh, uh, team and leadership development model. It's a yeah. system that helps for organizational development, how to build powerful teams. And in one of my videos, what I ask in the beginning is, are you the right person with the right mindset to lead this team? First of all, you as a leader. So I have a series of, of courses, executive leadership development courses, and then also the RP2EL system that helps people that are building a company, they're taking over a business unit, whatever it may be, but how to create a powerful team, how to build a powerful work culture and, and see it execute. And along the way, learning from mistakes. And, and one of the biggest things I find that's a differentiator are the ethical decisions under stress because everyone on the team has to flex those ethical decision-making muscles because you know, these things happen. You know, you're yeah. off on your own and a wrong decision can hurt the team. So that's, that's in a nutshell what it's all about. I love it. Thank you very Thank much. You. So people, I want people to go over to your Instagram. It's Ben Pappas one. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah, what's your website? Right. Um, it is www, obviously, dot rp2el.com. And I have another website I'm migrating to is just benpappas.com. So okay. please, and you can find me on LinkedIn as well in pretty much all social media. So just, uh, Look me up, Ben Pappas, and I will be there. I'd love to uh, interact with any of you out there. So please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you, Ben, so much. Thank uh, you so much for having me, Melissa. This thank you, sir. I, I enjoyed the conversation, and uh, I look forward to huge things happening for you. So um, bigger you. things than what you do. You know, like it, it's just it's really nice to have somebody to go to. So thank you. Thank you so much. I really okay. appreciate it. Okay. Have Take a care. great weekend. You too. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Hi, okay, thank you so much, Sheetal. And um, Ash, uh, let me see here. Hi, guys. Hi there, how are you? How are you? Can I see, can you put your video on? Yes. Sure. There we go. Oh, look at these beautiful, there she there is, beautiful Hi. faces. Hi, how are you? I'm very okay. well. How, How are, are you? you? Very well. Thank you. <laughs> we're so excited to have you on today. You guys are doing such amazing things. Um, Sheetal, we're going to start with you first. You're um, an actress. I was watching your work. I am. So my name is just my name is pronounced Sheetal. 
she till i'm sorry yeah. I know, um, that's okay i know you want to get it right so i'm just yeah please people, yeah. thank you <laughs> and uh, how my how do i pronounce your name ashok it's ashok ashok okay right. beautiful thank names you. and we're so thank happy you. to have you um so tell us what's going on and what you guys are doing uh for your community please sure ashok would you like to start kind of put them sure overall? yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. So I'm um, a board member of an organization called the India Center Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we're an organization founded about three years ago, uh, primarily based in New York City, although we are nationwide, um, whose mission is to really build a stronger connection between the Indian subcontinent and the United States. Mm -hmm. um, we've been around for about three years. Um, most of our programming has been sort of focused around the arts. So we do um, a yearly film festival. We've done a lot with dance, visual arts. Um, and so obviously, you know, when the world kind of screeched to a halt a few months ago, yeah. um, you know, we, we took a look at sort of um, the situation and um, tried to think of a way that we could sort of get involved on behalf of the artist community that, um, that we've been partnering with, people like Shito. Um, and so, you know, we realized that, um, that you know, art, artists in general are having a hard time making, you know, making ends meet during a situation like this pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it gets exponentially worse for people of color and, you know, and, for, and, and after that, even South Asian artists, you know, which is such a, when you think about it, um, such a specific and focused part of the community, that we wanted to do something to help. So um, we launched this fund um, uh, called the South Asian Artist Relief Fund. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, you know, we're in it for the long haul. The idea is that uh, we give grants of about $1,000 to artists who come from within the South Asian community um, to help them continue to do what they do, whatever it is that they do. And, um, you know, we're, we are about uh, a month or six weeks into it. We're, you know, we're, we're again, thinking of this as a long-term, you know, long-term sort of, we're making a long-term commitment because we realize that uh, the needs for artists will continue beyond when the pandemic is over. Um, so that's, that's, you know, that's who we are and, and that's basically why we started the fund. And did you put your own money in? I saw something. Did you guys raise money on your own? We did. We sort of looked at the, we looked at the year and, and realized that we were going to be spending some money on programming. Obviously that money in this environment is not, is not, will not be spent in that way. Mm. So we started the fund with some seed money from the foundation, from the, from the India Center. So we put in about 20 grand to sort of kick off the fund. Um, yeah. What's the eligibility? So you need to be um, uh, an artist whose background is from one of the South, you know, from one of the South Asian countries, which reaches from Afghanistan down to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be um, practicing your art in the United States. Um, you need to demonstrate that, um, you know, um, you've lost uh, some, some income because of the pandemic. Right. Um, and then, you know, we need to see some samples of work. But beyond that, you know, we didn't want to make the application process too onerous. We want to be able to help people, not force them to, you know, spend weeks um, applying for stuff. So um, those are basically the criteria. Uh, more, you know, your listeners can find out more information about both the fund and also how to contribute to it um, at our website, which is theindiacenter.us. Very nice. Thank you very much for that. Um, let me see here. She so how, how are you handling this pandemic? Ashton? Um, you know, as well as I think anyone can really, you know, yeah. every day is different. I'm just trying to get through the day. Some days I'm just trying to get through the hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it, every day varies and they all kind of run together. I mean, the fact that it's even a holiday this weekend has completely gone over my head. <laughs> I know. Yeah, now you're a very talented actress. Thank you. I, I was watching your work. <laughs> very, very talented. <laughs> Thank uh, you. When did when did you start acting? Oh boy, um, I have been working professionally for over twenty years. Wow, wow, yeah. uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that you get stereotyped? Um, I'm not sure uh, what you mean specifically, but um, in in broad ter terms, I think. You know, when I started back in the 90s, um, mm -hmm. the conversations I was being forced to have were very different than what I think people have the privilege of not having to deal with now. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have a long way to go, but it's really, I think, about, you know, in situations kind of telling your truth and helping people to see that, you know, there are many narratives and nuances to uh, culture and their stories. And the danger of a single story is something that I work very hard to kind of um, come up against and, and offer a kind of 
different way of looking at things. And uh, how, how do you think the South Asian community has been hit with this pandemic? Well, I think any community um, of color is hit in a different way, you know, yeah. and, you know, I was listening to what you were saying earlier um, about the arts and even, you know, in schools, the first thing cut our arts and we all pretend that that's not a big deal, but art is essential. Art is essential for all of us. And so when we're hit the way we're hit and there are so many artists of so many different disciplines that are struggling to just even feed themselves, um, we're being robbed of tremendous, rich, you know, art that we all need in our lives that, that comes in every portion of our lives that we, you know, really need. And so I think, and the South Asian community, I know this community really well. It's something that, you know, everyone ident identifies in different ways about who they are, but my kind of roots have been a big part of my life since I was a child. And so I, I know very well how hard so many of us are, are struggling. What advice would you give um, mental mental health? Because that's a big problem right now with, you know, depression and not being able to do what you do every day. I'm sure you miss, you know, acting and uh, yeah. you know, being able to be creative. Are you Are you being creative at home? Yeah, I'm trying to be, but you know, I have two small kids, like so many other people who have right. other responsibilities. I mean, we're, we're a hundred different jobs right now. And so I try to, you know, I mean, even if I find an hour of the day to do something, I feel like it's a luxury um, because of my kids or other obligations I may have. So, you know, I would just say, you know, self-care and taking care of yourself is really important. It's hard for me um, when so many other things are kind of weighing on you, but um it's important and um, reach out, reach out to people, do what you need to do. Um, take that time, go to the closet. I, I go in a closet and just lock it. <laughs> and then, you know, like 10 minutes later, my kids find me, but whatever oh, it is, just do yes. it because you know, you have to, you have to find a way. <laughs> Ashik, what do you think? What, is, what, what advice would you give uh, for people who are going through this? I mean, I think, you know, um, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's, it's, we're all kind of struggling or, or not struggling, but we're all sort of facing this, this pandemic in different ways. I think one of the things that, um, you know, the pre your previous guest was talking about, which is just sort of taking care of yourself physically and making sure that you get out and about and that you're trying to stay as fit as possible. Um, I know it sounds like, um, I know it, it sounds like easy advice in some sense, but um, I think sort of taking care of yourself both physically and spiritually and mentally, I think is, is, is sort of now more important than ever before. Um, and I know in some, way, some ways it's easier said than done, but, um, you know, that, for me, that's something that's been very important. Yeah. Well, I think this is wonderful what you guys are doing, and I want to thank you so much. So just provide the uh, email, the, um, the website to the uh, listeners. Sure, yeah. So it's, um, it's theindiacenter.us, so um, T-H-E, indiacenter.us, and um, you can find information both on, um, if you're somebody from within the community who wants to apply for one of our, uh, for one of our grants, you can find information on how to apply there. Um, and more importantly, if you want to donate to our cause, um, no amount is too small, um, but you can follow a link on, uh, on, our web, on the website there to, to donate to our GoFundMe account. All right, perfect. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. And uh, and I wish you luck and uh, just stay stay safe and stay healthy. That's that's the main thing. Thank you thing. so much for having us. Thank you. Likewise. Both. Thank you. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope uh, this information was useful. Uh, so I'll see you next week. And today, um, my father would have been eighty. So I wanted to just show you um, a photo or to whatever Don has for, there we go. <laughs> thank you so much. So happy birthday to my father up in heaven. And uh, thank you guys so much and be safe and uh, take care of one another and make sure that you check on your, your people. Bye.